Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Uh, in today's episode, I've got some fun new, in, uh, news to share with you. Uh, I have changed the name of the channel uh, to Bombshell Bikes. Um, Bombshell Bikes is a name that came to me by way of a friend down in Texas by the name of Brad. Uh, great motivator, uh, fantastic small business owner. Um, had a good chance to chat with him a while back, and I was struggling with the name to come up because I really wanted to you know, uh, have a good name for my bike channel and hopefully a motorcycle company at some point. And tossing things around, uh, he said, wow, you've got a bombshell of a wife. Why don't you just go with that? And I was like, hey, you're right. Uh, for those of you who didn't know, my wife is a pinup model. Um, I'll put her uh, link to her Insta in the comment section or in the video description. Also, um, one of the reasons this video took so long to come out since the last one, um, I have been struggling with video editing significantly, and I reached out to the local community and got it. Found an amazing guy by the name of Sean Delaire. Um, he's a friend and a, also a fellow veteran, and he's uh, been working on doing some of the video editing for me. He, he didn't touch this segment because I'm shooting it after the fact. Um, however, uh, I'll also put a link to his Insta in the in the video description so you can go check out his work. So in today's episode, uh, we will be working on uh, the steering stem for this current uh, bike build project. Um, this is a relatively simple process. Uh, as I probably filmed way too much of it, but Anyways, so this is what we're looking at right here. Uh, this is the steering stem. Um, the majority of it came from the original, uh, from the donor bike, the XS750. And I'm going to be making, in future episodes, uh, upper and lower triple clamps to mount the Gix Gixxer 1000 forks onto this frame. So I needed to extend the stem a little bit and made some changes. So you'll see in the video I'm adding this segment down here. So hopefully uh, you guys will get to see that. And in case it's not obvious, uh, the way that mounts is right here um, between the upper and lower triple clamps that hold the forks. And then this piece around it is the neck tube, which is actually a part of the frame um, of the XS750. So hopefully by the uh, by the end of this build, we're going to have uh, 2006 Gixxer 1000 forks on a 1979 Yamaha XS750 frame. So uh, this is just the first step. And so st hope you'll have... Uh, Stick with me, uh, watch this one, and then uh, in the next episode, uh, we're going to build the upper and lower triple clamps and get this whole thing finished up. I can't tell where the stem ends and the triple clamp begins at this point because of all of the... I don't know how the weld is penetrated if I'm just bending it over with the grinder. So, we're going to try and smash that off. Get a punch, a chisel, and I think all my good hammers are down in the garage right now because that's just how things work out for me. Hey, it's moving. I would love to be able to get to both sides of this so I could bump it down evenly, but there's no room with this triple clamp here, so. Cool. All right, sweet. So there we go. Bearing race is off. All right, give that a bite and see if we just bang on this and see what happens. No, it's not free yet, but I can see, I think I can see where it's, where the transition is. So I'm gonna take a little more material off of there. Um, I'm going to go at it with the grinding wheel for a little bit longer, and uh, if I don't like the way that's working out, I will switch over to a flap disc and uh, see if that does any better for me. You no, know, I don't know if this is pressed in from the top or the bottom, come to think of it. So you can see there's a, a lip right there where the bearing is supposed to rest against, right? That's where this race of this bearing sits. And I don't know if that's part of the shaft or the stem rather, or if that's part of the triple clamp. So, if that's part of the stem, then obviously it needs to come out that way. If that's part of the triple, which I assume it is, then this would need to go out that way. Huh. That's gonna be hard for me to tell. I mean, just, uh, I don't know. So I could just cut through this with the cutting wheel. If this is part of the stem, and I were to cut through here, and I would probably ruin this stem. Now granted, I have a lathe, I have plenty of stock, I could probably make a new stem. And it probably wouldn't be a whole lot harder. The tricky part for me is up here on the bearing retainer nuts. So I could probably find these nuts in a different size, but the way I'm looking at this is I already have these spin nuts or these spindle nuts and they are threaded uh, 25 millimeter, I forget what pitch, I think it's a 25 millimeter by 1.0. My lathe has standard or SAE change gears. So 
I can't cut metric threads on my lathe accurately. Um, and I'd rather not spend the money for uh, a die this size for a one-time job. So I'm gonna continue trying to free this stem um, from this triple clamp. And hopefully for you guys, it'll just be a few seconds of time lapse while I beat on it and grind on it and make a big mess and get all sweaty. So you guys get to sit back and relax and watch me laugh and curse and bang my fingers and uh, it'll only take me uh, only take a few seconds for you guys while it takes you know probably an hour for me so hang tight have fun uh, this stuff's harder than shit now you can definitely start to see where the materials are separating here now so I'm done past the weld penetration in a few spots. I'll get you guys in for a close-up once I get a little more of this taken off. Hey, there it is. Look at that. So after those last few blows, you can kind of see... Right, uh, there's burrs on my pick. Okay. The crack is starting to show right through there. So once again, I'm still not sure which way this needs to come off, but we're going to bang on it a few more times and just see what happens. Oh no! That was fun. I... I am sorry. I suck. My bench grinder is on the same workbench as my vice. You were sitting on the table of my bench grinder. When I hit the thing, it shakes the thing, and it makes you fall. So, sorry. But it looks pretty clear now that the stem is going to come out the bottom. Yeah! That's the progress. Well, it's coming off. So that's a good sign. Um, I did put a little groove in there where I cut too deep. But that's fine. My plan for this anyway, I'm going to take the whole stem here. I'm going to chuck it up in the lathe. I'm going to face off this end so it's nice and flat. And then I'm going to add a piece of stock to the end here. Uh, so I have a shoulder that will index into the new, uh, to the new lower triple clamp that I'm making. The new one's going to be aluminum, um, but I'm going to make it an interference fit with whatever this dimension is so that it has to be pressed in, kind of like what I'm doing here, but probably with an actual press next time. So uh, I'll come back once I'm done banging on this and I don't have to keep picking my phone up off the floor after I drop it. It took two hammer blows after I put the camera, or the camera down and switched it over, switched it upside down to uh, bang it from the top. And there we have it. Triple clamp is free. And I was correct, that ridge does indeed reside as part of the triple clamp. And there's our stem. Yeah, I've got a steering stem that I can use now. Pretty excited about that. So I'm going to go ahead and throw this on the lathe and face that end off, get it cleaned up. And then I will probably, not today, but I will probably at some point weld on a piece of stock that I can turn down to a slightly larger dimension that will give me a shoulder for the lower triple clamp to rest on. Plus, it'll give me a chance to make sure this thing isn't uh, completely bent all the hell now that I've had it in the vise and beaten on it for a while. So, so I got a setup over here. I went ahead and decided to use the steady rest because since I'm cutting the end, I can't exactly use the tail stock with the live center to hold it. Um, hard to see when it's spinning, but there's some brass shim stock in there because I didn't want to mess up that surface uh, with the jaws. And I didn't want to go any deeper because I didn't want to mess up the threads. So I grabbed it on that skinniest shank there, which is what engages with the upper triple clamp. Uh, and I've got some, just squirted some oil on the side there. I'm above the area where the bearing race sits, so I don't worry about uh, messing up that face. So I'm just going to take a couple of real light, uh, a couple of quick light uh, facing passes on here. This is, I believe, a uh, CCMT insert. Uh, and there, I got a well, quick change tool post. Love this thing. Probably one of the best purchases I made after getting my lathe. And I'm just going to manually feed this in for right now. Um, not worried about surface finish here because it's going to get uh, beveled and uh, welded onto anyway. So, all right, looks like that got it square in one pass. Let's take a look. Oh no, 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 that's still a hot mess. Uh, I'm just going to take a little more off of there. So there's a little bit of a beveled edge there, so I'm going to get taken off probably another hundred thou. So I'm going to get this squared up, and then uh, we'll make the piece that uh, it's going to weld into the bottom there. So I've got a piece of scrap stock that I had in my <laughs> scrap round stock bin down here. Um, it turns out it's almost exactly the OD that I need for that little shoulder at the bottom of the stem. Uh, this piece is about 38.8 millimeter and the goal I'm going for is 38. So I got to take off less than a millimeter off of that. So it's going to be great. 
but that's only going to be for the last six millimeters or so, so down here on this end. So what I'm about to do now is I'm just going to color a stripe along here so that I can go in with my calipers and mark off uh, six millimeters. I'll probably go a little heavy uh, so that I can come back and face the back side uh, once everything's fully done and welded and set up so I can get my exact six millimeter mark. And beyond that six millimeter, I need to add um, basically two millimeters to uh, the bottom of the stem because the bottom of the stem, wherever in the hell I set the damn thing, uh, I have my, my CAD drawing for my lower triple clamp is currently set uh, showing it as an inch and a half, which is uh, roughly 30 millimeters. And if I measure to the line on the stem, which I have somehow completely and totally misplaced, this is driving me nuts. Never mind, they're behind me. Anyway, from this line of corrosion right there that I'm kind of holding my thumbnail against, uh, down, I need to add 8 millimeters to that um, to make it through the lower triple clamp and then have the bearing race still sit right here in this... Um, area where the bearing was pressed onto before. Uh, this dimension from from ba basically right up here where this little tiny taper is all the way to the end is a nice 30 millimeter, which is what we want. So that's good. Um, I went ahead, while I had it on the lathe, I went ahead and bored out just a little bit of a shoulder in there so I have a nice square bit. So when I turn this down, I'm going to, whatever I don't need for that 8 millimeters that I'm adding, I'm going to turn down to fit inside of here. Uh, so for right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this down to... Uh, leave myself about six and a half, maybe seven millimeter down here. Then I'm going to turn two millimeters of shoulder at th uh, with a 30 millimeter OD. And then the rest of it I'm going to turn down to match the ID of this. So it's a nice snug hammer fit. I haven't actually measured the ID of this yet, but uh, once I get the 30 millimeter diameter cut, then I'll come back to this and uh, we'll get that knocked out. I'm just drawing lines all over the place because I'm not right. I'm left handed and I'm holding my camera with my left hand right now. Bad plan. And a little bit of a witness mark, right? Wow, that's not in focus at all. This thing is terrible at focusing on things. Come on. Focus, you fuck! There we go. Eh, a little bit of a witness mark there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my turning tool in to just a little a little heavy of that line, and then I'll set my depth stop, or my carriage stop, so that I don't go beyond that, and I will turn down to that carriage stop until I get the rest of the body down to 30 millimeters and we should be good to go from there so back to that same CCMT I really like these they produce they just produce a nice surface finish on steel and aluminum with the right feed rates so the machine shop where I worked for a while had a uh, well I didn't work at the machine shop there was a machine shop in the building and uh, I had access to the machines because I made good friends with the guy that did run the machine shop anyways um, they had bigger versions of these south bins and they had this really cool um, basically a micrometer uh, carriage stop right here. So if anyone knows uh, where I can get one for this machine, or if you have one and you want to sell it to me, hit me up in the messages. I'm very interested to get a um, the adjustable depth stop here. So this works pretty well for me. This hole is a 3 8 so I can take this set screw out and I can put a dial indicator in here, which I do frequently for, you know, if I'm doing multiple passes to a measurement or something. But in this case, I just want to come to that stop right there and works out pretty well. That's 240. We'll go 280, then we'll take one more pass at 20 thou and check our measurement and see where we are and then fine tune it from there. Okay, so we're at 124 and our target was 118. Man, we're off by that much. That's a lot. And yeah, we're at 3170. And to go down to 30 even, probably leave it a little over 30 so I can touch it up with some emery after the fact. So yeah, 118 is our goal, and we're at 124 and some change. So our goal is 118.15. We're at 120... Wait, what? Yeah, 124.20. So we need to take off 60 thou. So we'll take a couple of 30s, and that should put us right in the ballpark. We'll take 130, and then we'll take a 20 and check it from there. All right. Whew, I got smoky. Okay, we are currently at... 119.30. Okay, 119.10. We want 118.15, so we need to take off 10 thou, which 60 would have been perfect. So, Okay, so I got 118.40, so we got about 25 thou. Sorry, 2.5 thou. So we're a little over. That's fine. So now we got to figure out 2 millimeters above that because we need to add 8 to the overall 
distance from uh, that rust line there to the end. So this is not a very precise measurement and don't think it really all it matters all that much since all of this is 30, 30 millimeter in diameter. So the bearing will be a press fit no matter where I put it, but I'd like to get it as close as possible to where it was. Yeah, so that's, uh, let's put that in the right uh, metric. There we go. So yeah, so that's 2088. Oh, so we need four millimeters on there. Let's go look at the CAD drawing, shall we? So here's the part where I'm working on it. Um, turn the, eh, turn the lower triple clamp back on. Let's close the inspect window. Turn the lower triple clamp back on. There we go. Kind of zoomed in a little bit just so you can kind of get a quick glimpse of what I'm looking at here. This is the whole front fork assembly from this face to that face. It's 35 millimeters and we have 21. So we need we need 14. So we need eight millimeters above that. Wow. I'm glad I checked that. Okay. So we need eight millimeters above the shoulder. So there's not going to be a whole lot going inside there at all. It's all right though. We got enough material to work with. I think. So we're going to take 250 thou off of that last couple of millimeters of this uh, piece, and it should slip right inside this bore, and we will uh, we'll test that as we go. Oh, yeah. Just a nice little bit of a slip fit on there. Pretty happy with that. So we're going to come back. We're going to clean up all these little edges just because sharp edges are no fun for anybody. So I've got my chamfer tool here. I'm going to release the carriage lock because it's going to be in the way. I don't know what the designation of this insert is right here, um, but I really like it a lot. It's got four cutting spaces on it, and uh, actually, no, it's got rake on it, so it's only got the four. But yeah, it's a really nice little tool. You can use it for internal, external debur or deburring um, and light chamfers. It's good. It's a good little tool. We're just going to kiss these a little bit just to kind of clean them up, especially this one really doesn't matter. We'll never see that again. So we've got our piece here. All. Let's take it out of the chuck. Take it out of the chuck. Oh man, that's stiff. Yeah, so that'll sit in there. We'll uh, clamp and weld that. I don't know how I'm gonna clamp that though. Hmm. So maybe we'll just uh, hold on to it in the vise, let the gravity hold it in place while we tack it, and then we'll. Unfortunately, I don't have a rotary. Uh, I don't have a rotary positioner to weld that with, so we're just gonna tack it and we'll roll it around by hand. And then I'm a little bummed about this, but like I said, this part here. This whole 30 millimeter shank is all going to be inside the lower triple clamp from everything from this line to the back of this face, which like I said before, we will put this back in the lathe uh, with the steady rest and we'll clean up this face, this transition here and get the weld smoothed out. And then we'll come back and face this off nice and clean uh, to get our six millimeter so that when we uh, cut the lower triple on the CNC, uh, this should just drop right in because everything will be to our dimensions. So I've never welded with a GoPro attached to me. So this, uh, this could be pretty bad. Not sure how it's going to work for you guys. I might uh, go and get my tripod for this. I'm going to tack it now because I'm here and I'm ready to do that. Don't forget to turn on the gas. Make sure and put the ground clamp not on a critical surface. So over the years of TIG welding, I've never been a fan of foot pedals, just mostly because I very rarely find myself sitting down or in a position where I'm comfortable using a foot pedal. Um, so I'm a big fan of this thumb switch right here. Uh, this is a CK Worldwide thumb switch. I've just got it zip tied to a piece of aluminum bar stock with a hole drilled in it where I put my filler through here uh, and I tighten down that thumb clamp on top and then I can control current and start over here with the thumb switch and on the same hand um, use the, you know, you add filler with my left hand holding the torch. As I said before, I'm left-handed, so. Um, nothing special here, just a uh, number 17, kind of what looks like an eighth inch tungsten, number six cup. Uh, I'm going to put some glove on at least my left hand. This is probably getting a little toasty over time. Uh, like I said, not sure how much of this is going to show through, but like I said, I'm just going to tack it for right now and then come back for you folks and uh, probably go get the tripod before I finish weld this. If anyone's interested in welding, watching welding, it's kind of boring to watch if you ask me, but... Uh, it's fun to do, kind of boring to watch, but here goes. That's a lot of post flow. <laughs> Had this set up for some stainless recently. We don't need that much post flow. Geiss is expensive. So I got it tacked on one side. We'll go ahead and spin it around and get the other side, just so it's not gonna get wobbly on me. 
make sure we're square in the center in there nice and happy okay it looks good um you know what i didn't do was uh you know that cutting oil off of there it was kind of dumb it's probably gonna contaminate the crap out of my weld i'm a big fan of acetone for uh weld prep evaporates really quickly uh doesn't leave much of any residue behind oh well, you can tell that's warm yeah acetone sizzling off there oh hey there goes my blue mark too that's good not that that matters but I'll just give it a quick little wipe down with a shop towel and some acetone to get the majority of the oil off so it's not trying to contaminate my weld. And we're just going to tack it again and then we'll turn it on its side to do the finish welding and roll it over as I go. So that's not going to move. Okay. Yeah, got a decent little stick on there and a decent little stick over there. I am by no means a professional welder. Yet. Um, all right, so we're gonna just rest this here for right now while we go and uh, shut, shut the camera down and go get the tripod so get a better view on this. Okay, so now I'm also going to go ahead and fill that little <laughs> grinder groove I made. Not the prettiest work in the world, but considering I had to stop every few degrees, it's not the, bad, not the worst. So we're going to throw this back in the lathe, uh, put it on the steady rest, uh, clean up that weld so that it's a nice smooth transition. This of course after it cools off because ain't no way in hell it's going to be an accurate uh, measurement across there right now with that much heat just put into it. So we'll turn that down to the 30 that we have that we're looking for and then we'll face off the backside of this and also turn down that outer shoulder 